explain. But I, I came to this because my passion is culture and art. I believe in the life of the spirit. I think that grace and beauty is something that we all need in our lives and that artists are in fact the mirrors of society. And in today, today there is a cultural emergency in the world and I think the one path that is left open to us for building bridges of understanding is the, the world of art and visuals and the celebration of our culture. I am very proud to be a Pakistani and have that opportunity to express the issues that we hear about here today are very valuable and very important. Without the lens of our culture, it's not sustainable. Poverty has only been sustainable in our area through, through art and music. So the books that I have made, Legacy of the Indus, Lahore, the City Within, Legends of the Indus, and the new work, which is about to be released, is called Sacred Spaces, A Journey with the Sufis of the Indus. So these are all books and exhibitions and celebrations of traditions that inspire us, that nurture us, and are the bedrock on which we stand. Artist, painter, sculptor, graphic designer, and a filmmaker. And a gentleman. <laughs> Thank you. And starving artist. <laughs> well, these are all these art, which the filmmaking is an umbrella which is holding and carrying all this art. And I'm not saying that I'm the master of everyone, but one thing I will definitely say that there's a two things that are very, very common in each each of these professions, which is carries the passion and emotions. And in the painting, which I have to go through when I was studying, I come from a very small town, Chan, in Pakistan. And I, my mother wanted to do, become a lawyer, and I was at least interested to become a lawyer. So I, my passion was through the painting, and I had to lie to my mom that, oh, I'm studying law, and I'm the, so, but I was going to National College of Arts studying art. And the, finally, I have to convince her that, mom, I'm studying art. So she said, oh, you're going to paint cinema boards? <laughs> <laughs> the art is not only to paint a cinema board. There is much more in that. There, there, it develops the psychology of the human being, how you treat, how you make, not necessarily just to paint the board or cinema board or the painting or on the canvases. It develops an attitude, it develops a sense of design which process, which process your mind start to thinking, to make you thinking that how you develop the sense of design. Not only the design and then the cinema and then all those things which, is, which helps to do that. And, and now I come back to the cinema. Only the difference is this, there is a still images and the other cinema is a moving images. Only the canvas is still there. There is a still canvas and there is a moving canvas. So the both things are there and I want to draw the attention of the audience that trust me, there is a lot of money in the entertainment industry. And I, I thank to the digital invention and the digital invention is make me, the person like me who does not have that sum of money and I produced five, six films and which went into the, I made the money and there is a, there is a area which I, I can bring the attention to all the investors so they can invest the money and make the money on, on sporting the film, not only the intellectual property, not only the intellectual films, but the commercial films also. The biggest thing which not many people put their attention and see that avenue is the libraries. Come as come half a million libraries are in this country and every library buy the film, two or three films. If you just think about it, if you make five dollars on each DVD, you could be on one project, millionaire. And so that's what, and any movie nowadays, they make the 30 percent of the whole, whole money from the theatrical release. Forty percent 
they are making on the DVD. It's a huge market which I want to draw the attention of all these people who want to, who has the money, want to invest the money on this in this baby. And 30% come from the cable, and he knows he's a master of the cable and you know, the the music industry and the cable industry. So think about that. And I have a plan. I mean, I'm working on a film, which I have a secret ready, and I have a three, four Hollywood actors which like to help, willing to help me to put this project together and only the investment is a hundred thousand dollar and which I get, gives you the hundred thousand dollar project in the, the worth of a five million dollar project and converting digital into the into the 35 millimeter is very inexpensive, just twenty twenty thousand dollars you can convert into the 35 millimeter cinema and it goes to our Latino director, Amaros Peros, you may be know Amaros yeah. Peros, he invested only two million dollars on this film. Just the theatrical release in in U.S., he made seven million dollars. Just the theatrical release in the U.S., international international theatrical release is phenomenal. And then triple triple the money you can make from the DVD. Every country has the commission agents. You just call them and they are sitting to get the commission and sell your DVD. So, Mumtaz, I think it sounds like you got into this to make money. <laughs> well, it started with the passion, but I can, I'm can. i trying to bring the attention of the people, of the Pakistani people. They don't want to go to the entertainment industry. I mean, even even working class, either they would go buy a cab station, either they would buy a cab and a few of the 7-Elevens. But I will draw the attention to this one. Please invest into the entertainment industry also. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Now you've brought out the clowns, and uh, <laughs> here we are. Now, I'm an actor. Um, are you going to do the greed is good speech? <laughs> the greed is good speech, yes. Greed, greed is very good speech. No, uh, I think this panel today is about path less travel, and I would like to kind of take you back a little bit. And I think we think that this path has not been traveled before, but from my own background, I can tell you that um, I, uh, I have been in this business uh, for five generations. Uh, so for us to say that this path has not been traveled would be a fallacy because all it needs is bravery. And I'll give you an example. My great-grandparents were, uh, what ends up happening is that it's, we leave artists on their own to find their way through their their support system is not there. And I think that's something that we really do need to work on. As important as it is for us to have a healthy economy, it is also important for us to have a very healthy artistic economy and an artistic culture because I think it broadens the base of the country. It shows us off in, in different ways. Um, I think only only talking about science, all the science is important. That, you know, somebody's body, uh, what we can do with it, what cures we can bring to the body are important. Not to be confined by, by small things. Uh, it is important for, for kids to be able to dream, because maybe not all dreams come true, because, but somebody somewhere has to start that dream. And that dream comes from creativity when you break down the walls, when you break down inhib inhibitions of, uh, of a child. So there needs to be some focus put on that particular uh, area in our country. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I, I was born here. My parents at that time were uh, studying film and theater at UCLA. Uh, they went back to Pakistan. Uh, my father was... Uh, the Secretary General of uh, Pakistan uh, Arts Council for, for a while. He set up the first training institute for television. Uh, I came back to this country in 1980. I got my uh, education and development studies, which is issues related to third world countries, and I concentrated at that time, although I started off as more of an economics major, but my, I found myself always in front of a theater. Uh, it was something that I always wanted to do. And I wrote to my parents, and I said, you know, I want to follow in your path, and I thought they would be very supportive of it. And much to my chagrin, 
they have almost got down on their knees and said, do anything else but this. <laughs> because it is a hard path. Uh, and for many years, they, we kept writing back and forth, and their question always was, why want to survive in this business? Uh, and you need to have ways to save your core, because there's plenty of rejection, there's plenty of uh, heartbreak, but you need to still live. And that was their concern, and every parent's concern. I mean, I think your mother's concern was, was a valid concern, uh, that she wanted you to be a lawyer, because all our parents want is for us to be, you know, happy, uh, well-adjusted kids. Anyway, I, went and I finally got their approval. I had by that time started off my journey into, into acting and theater. I got my master's degree from Harvard in theater, and from that point on, I have been, I've done, I think, uh, probably 40 to 50 uh, stage plays. I've done about 40 to 50 television uh, shows. And I've done uh, a reasonable amount of, of uh, film and TV coming out, which is probably with the, with the Sundance uh, called Ashes. And I have another movie coming out uh, next summer called Star Trek. So it is my, my and closing, my only point is that it is a hard road and it is a road less traveled. But I think my only, my only appeal to all of you will be that if your child wants to go into this, or if any, if any way you can help somehow to sustain the people who want to take this, this new road, support them. Because you'll be surprised what we can do if, as long as we have the support of the community, of our parents, of our society, of our friends. That's what sustains us during our darker times. Uh, so hopefully that, that, that is something that we'll all think about as we leave this uh, hall today. And maybe we can uh, you know, make something new happen. Maybe there'll be other pioneers who will come, come along. Thank you. And in spite of the call uh, recently to be a part of this um, exceptional panel, not with this one only, but uh, the, the whole day. And there was a lot of things that, you know, I've been, I've been here since 9 o'clock and sitting in this room and listening to a lot of different people. Um, coming in from different backgrounds, and like you said, um, you know, we're, we're, we're the comedians at the end of the day, to lighten up the mood a little bit. Mm -hmm. But in all seriousness, you know, it was very interesting for myself, and I'll tell you about myself in a minute, but uh, what I learned today, just sitting here, uh, you know, from the people that were sitting on this panel to, 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 to work on, you know, trying to eradicate diseases, to come up with different ideas and aspects on um, making the human lives a little better on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate and it's my honor to be a part of this group, so thank you very much. Um, my passion, um, like uh, Sayed Saad said in the last um, uh, segment, and as uh, Farhan Bai just said, that it's, it's, it's about passion. And uh, um, I was born in Karachi, Pakistan, and um, my parents took me to uh, Germany. I lived in Germany for about eight and a half years, grew up over there, went to school, I'm fluent in German. And my parents um, have always instilled in me, um, once since we were little kids, especially my father, who was a risk taker since uh, the day he left Karachi at the age of 17, ended up in Germany with no money in his pocket, and basically, but get your education. And he's been telling us that since we were four years old, five years old. Um, growing up in Germany, um, as everyone knows, um, you know, Formula One racing and Autobahn is, is what, you know, what, what's popular over there. So I was surrounded by that um, for the first eight years of my life. Came to the United States in 1983, moved to uh, Dallas, Texas, and that's where I've been ever since. My father got into, you know, the real estate convenience store wholesale business and, um, you know, he's been doing that for, for, for many, many years. But as I started to grow, um, he kept on saying every morning at breakfast um, that, you know, do whatever you want, do whatever you want. And I've always had a passion for motorsports. I mean, you know, since the time I could remember riding a bicycle, um, I was racing against um, local kids in the neighborhood, um, you know, just racing them, crashing, falling down, bruising myself, playing, you know, Michael Schumacher. But, um, you know, growing up um, here in the United States, I wanted to pursue this. So at the age of 16, um, as I was getting into high school and getting my driver's license, um, I told my dad I'd like to go and start racing. And he says, you know, you're crazy. First of all, go finish your high school, and um, then we'll talk about it.
As I graduated from high school, um, I told my father, hey, you know, I'd like to uh, start racing now. I think this is a good time. I've got my high school education. I think I'm well educated. Let me go ahead. Um, at that time, of course, being 18 years old, being immature, you know, a bunch of kids out here, you know, you want to go race, you want to become an actor, an artist, you want to, you know, you want to play, play basketball, be a football player. I understand where these kids are coming from, and I will tap into that segment in a minute, because it's very important, because if we just do decide to do this down the road, or whenever I give you the permission to do this, um, no one has ever done this in our culture. You would be the pioneer. You, we don't know anything about the motorsports industry. I can put you in a convenience store. I can I can get you anything you want besides getting you to where you want to be in in NASCAR or Indy cars. I went and got my education at American University. Got it, you know, in 1998 at the time of graduation. It's a bit funny. My father came and gave me a hug and I said, Dad, get up the degree. Go and hang it on your office wall. So, but at that time, you know, um, he says, okay, how about getting your master's degree? <laughs> I looked at my dad and I said, you've got to be kidding, man. You know, what about the deal that we made um, four years ago? Um, but you know what? I was very fortunate. Um, unlike everybody else, I was very, very fortunate. Shukran on the Lord of God's blessing that... My parents were very supportive. When I told them I want to go racing after um, college and I was very serious about it, they did not say no. They said, fine, do whatever you got to do. You can jump into a car and play Dale Earnhardt. No, it doesn't work like that out there. Um, I think uh, what I realized over the years, and I've been doing this for 10 years, um, you can't become a CEO of a company overnight. You have to go through the stepping stools, in the ladder system, in, in any business, whether you're a professor, an actor, you know, working for Pepsi, anything. You've got to go through the, the, the ladder system. Got my uh, racing license, came home. My dad said, looking at what? I said, I don't know. It looks like there are a lot of stickers on all these cars. And literally, this is what happened. We sat down and said, I, I don't know what to do next. I mean, I couldn't pick up the phone and call, you know, Imran Khan, the cricket player, who's not a race car driver, and say, hey, buddy, how'd you get started? I literally had no clue. My family had no clue what the heck we were going to do. And uh, I said, Dad, you know, I think I'm going to have to start like, writing some letters to corporate sponsors, asking them for funding. So my dad takes out a legal pad and says, okay, here's the pad, here's a piece of paper, here's a pen, and start writing. Race car driver, can you fund my racing program? Of course, no experience, nothing, didn't even know how to put on a tire, but I was passionate enough that I wanted to learn the business. So I got rejected, um, and you know, kept rejections started coming in, and I told my dad, you know, I don't think we're going to be able to go anywhere, so I'm going to need some support from you. And um, like I said, I said, you know, sometimes you have to take your own money to invest in it to, to get something going. I was fortunate enough for my father to write me a check to uh, go to a racing um, series, which I started, came home, brought home the, the bills, and, you know, it's very expensive. I realized that's not the way to do it because it's going to be more expensive on us. I decided to buy a couple of race cars. Bought the race cars, great. Didn't realize I'm going to need a crew. You, know, you need people to work on the car, to change the tires, to change the oil, to change the side of the car. Didn't realize that. So I started to go to local car dealerships uh, and uh, started talking to some mechanics and brought some mechanics on board. And I ended up getting uh, Ben Keith Beverages on board, which is the distributor, the largest distributor in Texas for Budweiser products. They came on board and um, wanted to support me because they realized that a lot of the convenience stores are owned by Daisy's. So it was a business-to-business -business relationship that I brought on board that um, my father had instilled in, in me and in and, and the system. We kept on moving up, kept on moving up, and um, you know, in 2005, I was um, given the opportunity to race in the World Cup for the country of Pakistan, uh, its first national team. I got the call by default because there was no other driver out there. <laughs> they did their research, they couldn't find anybody. My name kept on popping up, so I was very fortunate to, to represent my nation, whole nation of Pakistan, a few years ago. I got done with that. I ended up getting you know a few more sponsors on board. One of them I'm going to uh, recognize. They've been very supportive. It's a Pakistani-owned company out of Houston, Texas, Tata Energy. I don't know if you guys heard or not. They're an electric company, power company that provides power to commercial and residential property. So they came on board because they believed in what I was doing and in turn, you know, getting the marketing services for them for the for the Daisy community in NASCAR. I'm one level away from NASCAR. I drive stock cars. There are six, seven, eight hundred horsepower. Almost the same weekends as Dale Earner Jr., Jeff Gordon, all the big boys that you see. And what I learned over the years is I'm trying to do something totally different. I'm trying to bring diversity to NASCAR. I mean, every weekend, 
that you see. How does Joe Sixpack feel about it? <laughs> Joe, some Joe Sixpacks don't like it, and some are okay with it. But you know what? That's part of the that's part of life. I mean, I can't please everybody, and. I'll do whatever I have to do to get into the sport. My family's been very supportive. My corporate sponsors have been very supportive. And I call it the Tiger Woods effect. That's what my goal is. I am one level away. Next door that I open will be NASCAR. And I've gotten this far, 10 years into it. Nothing's going to stop me. If something's going to stop me, it's going to be him. sitting out there that Farhan Bai was saying that, you know, give us an opportunity. I mean, you know, why did we all move to the United States or why are we living in Western society? One, of course, is to get a better life financially, but the other most important thing is to educate them. Leave them, you know, let them go like birds. And not everybody's dreams are going to come true like he just stated, but you can't have it where the son or the daughter comes home and says, you know, you never gave me an opportunity, maybe I could have made it. So let them get their education and then let them do whatever they want in life because we're very fortunate living here in the United States of America to be able to pursue things like this. So moms and dads, let them free. <laughs> One question, and then we'll open it up uh, to, the, to the audience. Samina, so, you're dealing in mainstream education, and you're working on things that are influencing and changing the paradigms in the mainstream world as a Pakistani American. Muntaz, not only are you an artist, but you've been a creative director for Ralph Lauren and Calvin Klein. I've seen your obscene paintings and structure the stuff that you've made. Fran, you're in mainstream Hollywood, and, and obviously. No, your sport is big in the whole sort of middle America kind of uh, area. As Pakistani Americans, do you feel you have challenges that are different than an average American would have? I'm in lucky in having the very best. Um, I went to Yale, I went to Harvard, and I believe in excellence. I believe that if you make something excellent, they will beat the path to your door. And so I have never let that standard below that of a high international standard and I think what that has brought to me is I have had all of the obstacles that my brothers have described but what has prevailed is the force of the idea, the beauty of the presentation and the fact that people were very very curious you know there is no information out there at an international level about where we all come from there are statistics there is all of the downturn and there is terrible uh, you know stories of what I don't care for but the kind of work that I do which is to portray the people and the authenticity of the culture brings to me challenges in the form of funding, yes, you know, the Sacred Spaces project is um, being sponsored by Harvard University, but it doesn't have, no project of mine has ever had a financial sponsor, and yet each and every one of them has, been, has won national and international awards and has been at the Victoria and Albert Museum and at the Smithsonian, and like Sacred Spaces will be in the major museums of this country, the Smithsonian, the Asia Society, Harvard's Peabody, and so on. And that is for me the payback for the investment of continuing to work against all odds. I never think about money. Today I have thought about it a lot. <laughs> we don't want to upset our clients, please. So they refused me. I had a difficult time. And then now I'm okay. I mean, the, the, the same clients came back and they're buying my art. And uh, well, the next, next, next president has the same middle name, so. <laughs> 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 you should run for president. No, it's, it's not the presidency. I mean, uh, of course, you're, you're asking that the money is not the factor in this. But when you do the films, I'm, I'm not looking for, for to make the money on this one. Of course, I follow my passion and follow my passion and when the people of all that caliber, are intelligent people are sitting here and, and they, they know how to, to invest and all those things but I want to draw their attention on this area also but we are not only, uh, only to carry the culture along of course we do the carry culture along and the one example which I give it to you once I was 
they were the ones shooting going on. Um, I've really enjoyed it and I'm sure a lot of you have. wanted to thank everyone. Before we all uh, disperse, uh, just a couple of quick uh, things. Uh, one is for those of you who are going on the cruise uh, this evening, you have to get to the Seaport Hotel by 6.30. The, the, the boat leaves. Um, at 7 sharp, so there is no room for error. So um, if you need a ride to the Seaport Hotel, just ask any of the locals. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to give you a ride, but it's the Seaport Hotel. It's only about 10, 15 minutes from here, so it's not a, it's not a big deal. And lastly, before we leave, this, you know, a lot of people have really contributed this. It's been a group effort, but there's three people I really want to recognize. Um, the first is Ifti, if our, our president. He's just been so much Thank you for, for, for your leadership. And the other two people are Tanya and Mo Idris. I mean, this is... We, we call them the open car couple for a reason. I mean, these guys just are, are so dedicated. It's, it's amazing and it's a pleasure to work with them. And, and thank you again. So thanks, everyone. And, uh,